Hello everyone, my name is Ji Eun Lee. Today, I would like to present a case involving a patient who underwent a cartilage repair procedure using Cartolife, a type of autologous chondrocyte implantation, ACI. Immediately after the operation, the MRI showed that the cartilage repair site exhibited a very high signal intensity. This is typical and reflects the initial stages of the repair process. Six months following the operation, the MRI revealed a subchondral bone marrow edema-like lesion and significant graft hypertrophy, estimated to be over 200%. As a rule of thumb, graft hypertrophy exceeding 150% typically requires surgical debridement, whereas lower amounts can be monitored. In another case, a patient underwent surgery using commercially available human umbilical cord blood-derived mesenchymal stem cells, HUCBMSCS, known as cardistum. Immediately after the surgery, the postoperative MRI showed that the subchondral bone was removed and multiple holes were created, which is a normal finding after the surgery. Six months after surgery, the MRI revealed subchondral marrow edema-like signals and a hyperintense signal of repaired cartilage. These are normal postoperative findings. One year after the surgery, the MRI demonstrated improved subchondral marrow edema-like signals and complete defect filling by repairing cartilage. However, compared to the surrounding native cartilage, the graft showed hypertrophy of approximately 150%, leading to protrusion from the chondral surface. The patient remained asymptomatic and did not undergo debridement. We'll discuss graft hypertrophy, a notable complication following ACI. First, let's define graft hypertrophy. It occurs when repair cartilage outgrows the native defect, protruding from the chondral surface. We identify this when the fill percentage exceeds 100%. Now, how common is this? Studies show it can affect up to 30% of ACI patients. Brown and colleagues found it in 63% of their cases, often requiring revision arthroscopy. Generally, we monitor cases below 150% fill. However, anything above that typically calls for surgical intervention. We're not entirely certain, but we have some theories. High cell density in pellets and vigorous extracellular matrix synthesis might play a role. Another possibility is simply implanting too many pellets during the procedure. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like it.